Last year, um, video game players playing the game Folded discovered the structure of the monkey HIV virus that confounded, baffled the scientists for over 10 years. They did it in 10 days. Uh, what's even more amazing is that they were able to understand all the back chemistry expertise required to solve this problem simply through playing Folded. What I will tell you today is the mechanism that allowed us to reach that particular goal and how can we can apply the same thing towards other big problems facing humanity today. If you, at the Center for Game Science, uh, several things that we're working on all center around being able to solve large, hard problems that computers, all computers together, or all people together individually cannot solve but somehow through symbiosis together they should be able to solve. And our approach specifically is to basically figure out how we can uh, evolve uh, human minds towards greater ability uh, to solve these kinds of problems and, and then together in a co-evolution with computers uh, to achieve something that uh, currently is not doable. Now, of course, as we all know, as, as amazing as people are, uh, they can also very easily argue and quarrel and fight or very quickly become disinterested uh, or, uh, or bored. And that's, that's a big problem towards a lot of these discovery things. So what we really need to do is figure out a way how to, over an extended period of time, engage people uh, uh, in such a way that uh, they will become intrinsically interested in the actual problem and become more and more powerful problem solvers in the process. Uh, in the same way, the computers co can co-evolve over time with people and figure out how to be the best tools towards uh, enabling uh, human problem solving. So the way that we do this is through incentive structures. Basically, we create ways in which we engage people over a long period of time. Uh, and those, simply through that exciting excitement of discovery, uh, not only do people become better problem solvers and experts, but they become a part of a big collective intelligence that is now capable of solving much harder problems. Okay, so the question, if you look at sort of how we stand in a standard ways do uh, education and learning at large, uh, you will recognize a familiar pattern. We start with experts, we see what they do, we distill that kind of knowledge, and try to practically force it on students, co-workers, in hope of great results. And it works, it works, but it works on very, very few people. Uh, and then we expect these siloed experts, few of them, to solve, to find cures for diseases, to find new sources of energy, on, on create educational systems that actually work. Uh, and it, and it, there's just too few of them. And so I'm here today to tell you that another, there is a way to approach this in a different way such that we can re remove this particular problem. And the idea is to actually put people first. And to, instead of giving them something that they're not even sure why they want, figure out the actual incentive structure that makes them deeply care about the problem and way in which they can achieve it. A and through that, I'm here to tell you that what comes out over a long period of time is knowledge expertise that produces uh, discovery and education. So, okay, so maybe I'm waving my hands a lot, but uh, how do I know that this is true? I know it because in the game Folded, uh, which you see here, how many of you, by the way, have played Folded? Okay, we have about 10% of people. So uh, it's a game that basically maps the big scientific problem into a 3D puzzle that's played uh, in a massively multiplayer way by many people who collaboratively figure out how to restructure the protein in the right way such that uh, the best scoring solution ends up being perhaps the next cure for a disease. Um, what's really uh, amazing about this is that with Folded, we were able to take the expertise on protein folding uh, and then multiply it by a factor of four. So now we have four times more people that are experts in this particular area in the world. And what were the, how good are these experts? Well, I can, I'm happy to report in less than two years, uh, these people produced four 
really big discoveries. Three of them were published in Nature, uh, the most eminent uh, uh, journal in, in science. And some of these discoveries include, as I mentioned, a protein uh, that scientists didn't know the shape of for uh, 12, 13 years. It also includes a brand new protein that doesn't exist in nature, that's 20 times more reactive than anything else scientists have known before. Um, so that's, that's how I know that some of these things uh, are, are possible. Uh, but if you look at sort of the standard educational process that these people went through, uh, you, uh, they didn't even know that these problems existed at the point a year ago when they started working on this problem. So uh, that's not so great, but at the same time it is great because it means all of us here and everywhere else in the world still don't know where our undiscovered potential uh, uh, is. And so the question then is, how can we make all of us uh, into uh, specific experts on the problems that we really care about? And looking specifically at education, imagine if we could take all the mathematical mathematics books, take all the problems that we have there that compose of all these boring homework sets that we've been doing for maybe two decades, maybe three, some of us, who, who ended up with PhDs. And what if we can turn each one of them uh, into not one, but 10 different games? So there is no homework. Now all we have is home play. And what's nice about this home play is that um, every single one of those games directly and automatically adapts to every learner individually. So all of us will get just the optimal pathway towards learning and, and understanding a particular concept. Uh, what's, what's more, there is no grading, there is no testing, because the game knows uh, in detailed ways exactly what are the masteries that, in this case, Alexis knows, or what are the common concepts that the entire class is struggling with. And in fact, it can suggest to a teacher specific intervention for 15 minutes that will get the entire class unstuck, unstuck in the fastest possible way. In fact, we have 200,000 students currently uh, in the trials in the US doing, uh, doing exactly that, learning through the game. And we're hoping that in the next years we will extend this to uh, from half a million to then two million uh, students at the same time. What other things are possible? So uh, we actually don't know, but here are the things that we're working on. We're working on a huge number of problems, like for example, creating nanomachines, machines that work on a molecular level that I can identify cancerous cells and then remove them from our body. Turns out you can map that problem into a Tinker Toy uh, creative uh, construction set. So I expect middle schoolers to be able to uh, resolve these problems uh, very effectively. In addition, we're working on uh, how to eradicate corruption through a specific way uh, to uh, uh, figure out how all of us together can, can, figure, uh, can figure out all of those solutions together. So uh, as, I, as I conclude this, I wanted to mention that hopefully as you walk away from this theory, you can figure out how to, what are the other collective, what is your role in the collective intelligence, and what are the next set of problems we should be working on together. Thank you.